imagine a Zelda The Wind Waker is a dreamlike atmosphere beyond your imagination. Just like earlier Zelda games, it took the series one step forward. It took great advantage of the GameCube's capabilities and made the greatest hub world ever. The graphics are nice and colorful, and the waves just add to it. This game is brilliant. Now, when I heard it was going to be a sequel on the DS, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, why would they make a sequel to a GameCube game on the DS? But I still decided to check it out. Now, when you start the game, it looks like it's gonna be really good. The graphics are nice and colorful, animations are nice, and the music sounds decent. <laughs> Holy crap, look at Link! He looks terrible in this game. So you get to the title screen and, well, only two save files. Now, I don't get the story completely, but at least Link, Tetra and the pirate crew are exploring new seas as they suddenly find the ghost ship and Tetra decides to board on the ship. Link tries to board as well, but then he falls into the water and wakes up on this beach. Holy crap, how original. After that, you get introduced to character after character, like this annoying fairy, this cliche grandpa guy who acts like he knows everything, and a seaman named Lineback who turns out to be really funny. But Tetra and the pirate crew play a way too small role in this game. So far, I've only seen them in the first intro. And where's the King of Red Dragons? He's nowhere in the game. Why? It probably jumped the sharks. And since Link doesn't talk, we just have to deal with all these new characters. So you go around this island, and you control your character by pointing on the screen with a stylus, which seems cool at first, but it gets really irritating, because if the stylus is too close to him, he walks so slow, and you can't use the d-pad. Now, one thing I don't get is, why is the camera always in this overhead view? It gets annoying because you can't see what's ahead of you. In the 3D Zelda games, you can look all around you. You see the landscape, you see the hills, you see the horizon, you see the sky, you see everything. But here, all you see is the ground. I also find myself looking way too much at the map on the top of the screen, since it shows the whole island exactly how it is. The landscape design is also very ugly. Everything is just flat, with no real hills at all, and when the terrain elevates, it's just a straight wall that goes up. But the dungeon design is even worse. In all early Zelda games, the rooms have always been separated. The map only shows the location of the rooms and represents them as rectangles. It's always exciting when you enter a new room, because you never know what obstacles and treasures are hidden inside it. But here, the dungeons look like a labyrinth. The map shows the entire floor you are in, plus every single obstacle. And you can see what's across the wall. So there's no surprise when you actually get to the room, since you already know how it looks. The only time when it's a surprise, is when you enter a new floor. But each dungeon has about 3 floors, so... But one of the worst things about this game is that before and after each dungeon, you have to enter the Temple of the Ocean King that you must complete before the time runs out. So what do you do in these temples? Sneak around and prevent getting guards' attention. Yes, I'm not kidding. You have to slowly sneak around and there's a time limit at the same time. I have to be patient. But I can't because there's a time limit so I have to hurry up. But I can't hurry up either because then the guards will see me. And you return to this temple between every dungeon. And it slows down the game so much. Now I want to talk about the combat in this game. It's terrible. The camera is so far away, it's like looking at ants. There's no lock-on system and there are too many weak enemies and barely any strong ones to fight. All you do is just tap at the enemies with the stylus and they're gone. This is one of the very few strong enemies you fight. You have to use your boomerang, draw a path around it and throw. The weapon setup is awkward. You only have one weapon slot, which means you'll be switching weapons a lot. In order to switch weapons, you must tap on the items button in the corner. And instead of getting a nice big item selection, you get the most pathetic item selection ever. Are you serious? These are all of them? This is the smallest selection I've ever seen. Even worse is that the game doesn't even pause while you're choosing weapons. So if you're in a sticky situation, you have to choose quickly. And the icons are so small that you can sometimes miss the one you're trying to select. Now in order to get from one island to another, you have to use this huge ship. 
You draw a path to the island you want to get to, and it automatically takes you there. Now you can finally see the sky, but the ship is extremely slow. The sea is so small, there are too many enemies attack you. I hate these leaps that you have to jump over every 5th second. There's no day and night system at all, and it's too hard to unlock the ability to warp. In other Zelda games, it has always been a tradition that you unlock the ability to warp after the third dungeon or something. But here, you can only unlock it after you beat in the whole game, so that just breaks the whole point of warping. Anyways, graphics. I think they're colorful, but the landscape and dungeons are too bland. I wish there was some more realistic terrain, and the dungeons look like they're made of Lego brick. The art direction for the characters could also be better. The hair is just textures, and instead of fingers, we get these lame Powerpuff fists. Couldn't they at least make textures fingers, like in Ocarina of Time? But the worst thing is that all the characters have this ugly brown outline, which makes it easier to see how edgy the characters really are. The music in this game is a mixed bag. The cutscenes have absolutely spectacular music. And the theme on the ocean is decent. But other music is terrible and way overused. Like this is the music you hear in every forest and every deserted isle. I hate this soundtrack, but the worst is yet to come. This is the soundtrack that you'll hear in every single dungeon, temple, and inside other scary dark places, including the ghost ship and temple of the Ocean King. Trust me, you're gonna wanna rip your ears out by hearing this song. It's the most overused song in the whole game. So overall, I'm not very impressed with Zelda Phantom Hourglass. There's also spirit tracks coming soon, but I pretty much stopped caring about the new Zelda games, since Nintendo doesn't know how to make good Zelda games anymore. Now it's all motion controls and gimmick control scheme crap. The last good Zelda game was Twilight Princess on GameCube. The Wii version was an abomination, Phantom Hourglass was lame, and I'm not especially looking forward to spirit tracks either. And f**k, this picture should go to hell!